Back to the science. Right. I want to know how much you know. It's not a test, OK? We're going to share, because some people will remember some things, some will remember others. Try and learn something, though, the second time through that you didn't learn the first time through. So if something comes up and you think, oh, I don't know that, try and listen out for the answer, and then you'll probably, you know, double what you learned from the first time. But at this time, I definitely want you to... Um, well, hands up would be great. And then... Um, you know, to give us the answers. Right, so we're going to go pathogens first, and there's two main types. Can you remember what the one was on that side? Bacteria. Well done. Oh. Bacteria. I don't even remember everything about bacteria, but I want to know how the damaged cells, what do they make? Toxins. They make toxins. Excellent. What can we kill bacteria with, Max? Antibiotics. Antibiotics. Excellent. And does anyone remember any examples of bacterial infections? Jason? Um, food poisoning. Food poisoning was a good one. <laughs> yep. Sore throat. Sore throats. Tetanus. Excellent. Well done. The second family of pathogens, Emma, were viruses. Well done. And they were totally different to bacteria because they weren't living, were they? They needed to get into a cell to be alive. How did they damage host cells? Or what did they do to host cells that causes damage in the body, Beth? They burst them open. They burst them open. Excellent. What are they not affected by? So they're going to be this. Don't go to the doctors for this because it's useless. Antibiotics. Antibiotics will not work. Can anyone remember any examples of viruses uh, cause infections? Flu, Flu. polio, polio. No, no. and colds. There was chicken pox was the other one. Well done. Right, pathogens and our defences against them. First, the just the general body defences. What is a constant barrier? Skin. The skin. What is coating the, the um, breathing system organs? Mucus, excellent. And what does that trap in it? Traps the, the bacteria, the pathogens. If we cut our skin, what will cause a clot and therefore prevent anything entering? Platelets. Platelets, brilliant. And what kind of blood cells are our main line of defence, Jordan? White. white blood cells, excellent. Going on to white blood cells, you need to know three things white blood cells do. The first one was what do they eat or engulf? The pathogen. They're going to eat and engulf the pathogen. They're going to make something which will fight the pathogen and cause it to clump. Max? Antibodies. Excellent. And what will neutralise the poisons produced by bacteria? Jason? Antitoxins. Excellent. This is what happens when we make antibodies. It, this, you need to study this animation because it helps you to realise the specificity of antibodies and how they've got to fit the pathogen exactly. So first, the white blood cell sees or recognises the, jo Josh, pathogen. the pathogen. Um, this is word of the day on this lesson, isn't it, pathogen? And what will it make that is going to be exactly the same shape as the pathogen, Tom? Antibodies. antibodies. So the antibodies fit onto the pathogen and cause it to clump. And then another white blood cell can come along and... It's going to eat it. Now, sorry, I've just gave you that one because I said eaten by another and I said it. White blood cell. Right, in a vaccine, a small amount of the Josh <laughs> is given to the person. The person makes specific what? Antibodies. antibodies, good. The antibodies kill the pathogen. We'll stick with hands up, please. And the something which makes the something stays in the blood forever. The that makes the, stays in the blood forever. Excellent, well done. Right, antibiotics are great, and they were one of the biggest sort of medical discoveries of recent times, um, because we can kill bacterial infections with them, but there's, there's two main problems with the use of them. They can be, bacteria can become, Max, immune or resistant to them, so they don't work anymore. Does anyone on this table know an example? MRSA, which is a superbug. Multi-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's resistant to the antibiotics. And the other problem is they're useless against our other family of pathogens, viruses. Right, this was the, probably the most difficult concept that we looked at. It was how resistance comes about. And I said that bacteria and even viruses as well can change and mutate so uh, they become resistant. But how does the whole population end up resistant? What do we start with in the population? What was that V word? Very. Very 
variants or variation. Yeah, all of the bacteria show variation. That means some are resistant, some aren't. Just by natural variation, like some of you have got blonde hair, some got brown, just because of your genes, some are resistant, some aren't. What did I say there would be between the bacteria, therefore, if, if um, there's a lot of antibiotics around? There's going to be competition because some are going to die out and some are going to kind of, if you like, win the competition because they've got the best genes. And we call that survival of the fittest. Yeah, survival of the fittest, the best genes are carried on. Um, and therefore, um, something is going to be passed on to the next generation of bacteria, the genes, which is going to end up that the whole population of bacteria are going to be resistant. And you end up with a massive problem because in hospitals where there's a lot of antibiotics, you end up with whole populations of bacteria that are all immune or resistant to the antibiotic. Right. In this experiment, what this data shows you is at different years, the, the amount of hand wash that's been used in hospitals and the corresponding number of MRSA infections per 100 patients. And my question is, what do these results show about how the use of hand wash is related to the spread of infection? What does this data show about that? The more hand washing you use, the less you've got infected. Excellent. So the more hand wash that's being used there, the less MRSA infections we're getting. And can anyone remember who carried out the initial experiments on this one? Isn't that someone? Ignaz. Uh, Semmelweis. Semmelweis. Well done. That Hungarian doctor. Ignaz Semmelweis. You need to try and remember his name. Spelling's not important, but to try and remember the, the, the sound of the word Semmelweis. 